What's up YouTube? This is uh, Big Mike. Uh, this is a response video to 78 Sports TV uh, where he wants to... Uh, he was talking about exactly what is ducking. Uh, he gave his uh, views on what he thinks ducking is in boxing. And he asked different YouTubers uh, what did they feel uh, was their criteria uh, for ducking. Mine's is very uh, simple. Um, I guess I just have to say it's common sense. This is common sense. Um, I think if, for instance, if you look at a boxing announcer and he gives a 10 word question which pertains to why a fighter he's interviewing isn't fighting uh, a guy who should be a mandatory fighter. And that fighter gives a newspaper article sized response full of uh, full of technicalities and, uh, and, and, and uh, political reasons and financial reasons why he's not fighting a certain fighter. Uh, and particularly if there's a, a pattern of that, then I would be less likely to give that fighter the benefit of doubt as to whether or not they're ducking another fighter. Um, you know, if a fighter consistently dodges uh, mentors and higher ranked fighters, uh, I understand sometimes that a fighter may fight a certain fight based on a financial, what would what, be more beneficial financially. I, I mean, I get that. I understand that's a part of boxing. But when you consistently do that, and the fighter that you're fighting, if, you, if you're constantly fighting um, low-risk, high-reward fights, and you constantly do that, but then you want to exclaim how great you are, as a fighter, then that's going to highlight your opponents to me. And that's going to make people want to label you a ducker more um, vociferously than someone who uh, doesn't do something like that. You know what I'm saying? At least if you are just a prize fighter, to just be a prize fighter and just say, look, I fight for the money, you know, uh, I don't want to get hurt, you know, I, and there's a certain fighter who has actually said that they don't want to get hurt. But you're a boxer. Uh, I mean, some people say I always pick on this guy, but I mean, he says things that are just just makes you very suspicious. That this guy is a habitual ducker, but he's not the only one. I wouldn't be. I'm not going to sit up here and say that he's the only fighter in boxing who ducks. Uh, I guess the majority of fighters have ducked opponents. Now, then I remember uh, years ago, Riddick Bowe clearly ducked. Uh, Lennox Lewis gave up, gave up what was the WBC belt. I might have the belt wrong. But he clearly gave up a championship belt just to avoid him. He did not want any parts of Lennox Lewis. Um, that was a clear duck. Um, there are instances where it's clear and apparent that a boxer does not want to fight another boxer because he's afraid of losing to this fighter. He's afraid of losing to this fighter and or he may be afraid that this fighter is going to physically hurt him. Um, you know, I, I've, that, that's just how I feel about it. Um, when, but you have to have clear evidence that a fighter is ducking another fighter. I can't go on um, backroom speculation and gossip. You know, I always would give a guy the benefit of the doubt um, as opposed to, you know, I always would give a fighter a benefit of the doubt if he's being accused of ducking, if he doesn't show, uh, he hasn't shown a proclivity to do something like that. Now, like a guy trying to think of a fighter in the past, if I reference a lot of fighters in the past, it's because I'm just now trying to get back into boxing. I really stopped watching boxing about five, six years ago, 
So I'm kind of stuck in a time warp between me growing up in 2009. So, but I think about a guy like Roy Jones, and you know, I think you would have to say that once he became financially more secure, he went through a period of time where he was fighting less than stellar competition. Was he? Did that make him a ducker? Um, yes and no. Um, I don't think that Roy Jones feared fighting fighters because he felt like he would lose. I think he was picking fights because he was looking at the lower risk, high reward situation that some fighters get into. I mean, you know, Roy Jones' friend was Gerald McClellan. And you saw what happened to Gerald McClellan when uh, he fought Nigel Benn. Um, that was a very risky fight, even though he was the underdog. And Gerald McClellan has paid the price for that fight ever since. He saw that. So that was vivid in his mind. So after that situation, he probably wanted to be in a situation where you're in a, a very risky sport and you don't want to end up with the long-term physical permanent damage that Gerald McClellan had. So in a situation like that, even though technically I guess you could say that a guy like Roy Jones Jr. was ducking people, more dangerous fighters, um, he did, and eventually he did uh, give uh, Antonio Tarver uh, his big chance. But, I mean, in certain situations, I guess, like I said, it's a duck, but I try to look at both sides of the story with that. Um, but... On the other hand, going back to the top guy in sports now, he is very, very um, well off financially. Um, there's nothing wrong with taking those types of fights here and there. But when you constantly do that, when you avoid a certain type of uh, ethnic group as fighters and then have the temerity and the gall to call yourself the best fighter ever, then that, yeah, like I said, it's going to highlight people looking at you uh, under a microscope and, you know, being more critical of you. That's just how it is. If you're going to boast and bluster about how great you are, then you got to be prepared to be under the microscope. But basically, that's how I feel about that issue. And thank you for listening.